There's a group of people on the earth today that are not of this world. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about uh, um, um, aliens. I'm not going to talk to you. There's new shows coming out that, they're, uh, that all the studies are going on and they're finding out, you know, that maybe we've been visited by aliens. I could have told them that a long time ago. I've been pastoring for 34 years, and I know for some reason they landed in our yard somewhere. And, uh, but but there, there, there is a group of people on the earth today that are not of this world. How many of you know there's a group of people on the earth today that are going to live to see some things that your father's father would not have believed were even possible? How many of you know that's true? From, a, from an inventional standpoint of things being... Uh, made and created computers and other things like that to medical breakthroughs to all kinds of things yes but also the things that uh are happening all over the world and even like i said uh, to a bunch of preachers not long ago i never thought i would live in my lifetime to have to stand up and defend marriage as an institution between a man and a woman just old school, if you want to call me. I'm old school. But I never would. You couldn't. I told Ann Jimenez, I said, she was in the meeting, and I said, I just can't believe that I'm here with a group of preachers and others trying to defend the subject of marriage as being between a man and a woman. I, I just can't even comprehend it. And the things that we see today uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there are a lot of things going on in the world that, uh, that are, uh, would, would cause our fathers, our forefathers, our fathers, to just absolutely be stunned. Now, they're not aliens, though, that I'm talking about, so I want to make sure you get that. We're not talking about vampires and all that other stuff. And I hope you'll get this picture. I think it is an insult that those idiots in Hollywood made a movie of Abraham Lincoln as a vampire. To me, that is a disgrace. I think it's an insult. I think it's moronic. I think it's stupid. I think it should go to the garbage pail, and that's where it belongs. Hello. Just my little point. They're not aliens. They're not from some other planet, but there are people here on the earth that are not of this world. And Jesus referred to them in several places, and I want to take you there this morning. And uh, he said they're in the world, but they're not of the world. How many of you hear that? People are going to see angels and have encounters with God that have never been witnessed before. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to speak clearly to a group of people in the earth and they're going to be a group of people a remnant that God is going to use to bring about the greatest transformation and change that the world has ever known are you listening to me now it may be these little kids that were standing here this morning it may be them it may be that little boy even to that age in his generation but I guarantee you that those on the earth right now are going to watch and see the glory of God revealed. Are you listening? Revelation chapter one, uh, 3, verse 21 says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. And I will, and I also, as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. How many of you hear that? Now, the word that I want you to get today is the word overcome. That's this group of aliens. That's this group that's on the earth. And the Bible refers to it. There's seven times right here in the book of Revelation that this group is referred to. It's one of the most amazing groups in the Bible. And this group in the Bible, you must see it. You must listen. You must look at it because this group is an identifiable group. How many of you hear this? They're on the earth. And there is a group of people on the earth right now that are overcomers. And God has placed them in 
the earth. Are you listening to me? And they have an identifiable mark on them. There is an identifying factor to them that if we look, we're going to find them. How many of you want to know where the terrorist is? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, okay. How many of you want to find uh, when people have something, though, on the other side, not bad, but good, you want to know where they're at, don't you? It may be you. How many of you say, whoa, what if it was me? Seven times in the book of Revelation says that the overcomers are the only ones who will get the rewards it describes and who are privileged to rule and reign with Christ Jesus. Come on, how many of you see that? See, that means that there's a discernible definition and a discernible evidence that you are one of those people that has blessing in your hand. We talked about an inheritance. We talked about the gifts of God and God is raising up a people in the earth that have a definable mark on them that there's blessing in their hand. How many of you hear me now? Oh, you don't want to miss today's message. I didn't come to preach to a dead group. I came to preach to people that want to be a part of what God is doing on the earth, not a part of what Hollywood's doing, not a part of what Washington's doing, not a part about all the doomsday stuff, but a part of what God is up to. And I can tell you he's up to, he's planted a group of people in the earth today that have a definable mark in their life that says they're overcomers. You know, so many people are preoccupied with going to heaven, and I'm here to tell you heaven's good, but there's another event called the overcomer's event that's worth looking at, saints, because it might be more powerful than just going to heaven. I mean, look, saints, it's a mark. God is, you know, people talked about in the Bible, they were so worried about getting the mark of the beast. I don't care about the mark of the beast. God's going to mark a people on the earth that are going to have extraordinary exploits moving in their life that people are going to mark them from around society. They're going to come to them. They're going to want to know them. They're going to want to touch them. When the world that we know is coming undone, they're going to want to find where one of those overcomers lives. Listen to me, when you walk in this revelation and you walk in what God has for you, you will be the salt out after people. Where did I get that? I got that out of the book of Isaiah. For the Bible says in Isaiah that there is a people that will be the salt out ones. People will come and say, you're one of them. How many of you know when Peter denied the Lord, he was sought out? Because they said to him, aren't you one of those ones? And then he started, you know, no, not me. I don't know what you're talking about. And he denied the Lord. And that's what a lot of people are going to deal with today. They're going to deny the Lord in the midst of that moment. How many of you say, Lord, thank you that you could put an indelible mark in my life that would cause me to be so uh, obvious that I wouldn't be a 007 agent anymore? How many of you want to be able to be light and be truth and be salt and be the salt of the earth? Come on, how many of you hear this? And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. You see, now that's important. You can't just have it for a few Sundays. Are you hearing me? You can't have it for a few holiday sessions or a few times when your life's a mess and you run back into the house of God for a Band-Aid fix. You can't have it just that way. He who overcomes and keeps my words, uh, works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Look at this. And then it says in verse 27, he shall rule them with a rod of iron and they shall be dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel. Can you hear this, saints? Now it says that these people are going to have power over the nations. How many of you say, Lord, you know, I I really believe, saints, that, that we just so don't understand. We only think salvation is just get saved to get us all fixed up so we can go to heaven. And we fail to realize that God came to, Jesus came to preach the kingdom of God and to reveal the kingdom on the earth. I want to be saved uh, in 10 years from now. I want to be saved in 15 or 20 if I live that long. I want to be saved till the end. I would say amen. 
Too many of God's people just come to church to get fixed for the moment and then live their life the way they want to live it. If you believe it's the end time, which would be from the catastrophic event outlook, then understand the end time is also coupled in with what God intends to do in the end time. See, too many people look at the end time and, oh, my God, tragedy and doom and the bombs and the, all of that and fail to see if it is the end time, then rejoice because the end time also brings a manifestation of the glory of God. That's why the book of Revelation says it is the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, not of the mark of the beast and not of some devil. Hello? So if you believe it's the end time, you better believe in what God said he was going to do in the end time. Some of us, oh, it's the end time and and Iran's going to bomb Israel and the nuclear bomb and and the beast, uh, you know, the the son of perdition is going to come and be on the earth and all this stuff. Okay. Well, if that's going to happen, saints... How many of you know that Jesus told us what he's going to do in the end? Now, who are you looking for? This is defining a group of people called overcomers. How many of you know there's another group of the Bible called saints? There's saints, there's overcomers, there's a number of types of people. And I want you to hear God has in the earth right now this group called overcomers. God's already put them on the earth. They're empowered by the Holy Spirit. They pray. They're honest. They're righteous. They're people who are committed to to the Lordship of Jesus, and they are walking on the earth today. It says, for this is the purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Look. Jesus, the reason he came was to destroy the works of the devil. But what happens is we entertain the works of the devil. We live in it. And then when it shows up and starts taking authority in our life, starts coming against our finances or our purpose or or our family or some other thing, then all of a sudden we don't know what to do. How many of you know the reason Jesus came was to defeat the works of Satan? Not defeat him, Satan. That's another issue. But the works of the devil. How many of you know that's what you and I are on the earth for? We're here. Somebody called me the other day while I was on the phone with them. I mean, I got, I got downright tough with them and I just said you stop that you stop that you listen to me you speak life you speak what God's word says and stop speaking Uh, how many of you know the enemy will come in and get you to come in agreement with him He'll get you to agree that you're a loser, that you're never going to make it, that you're not going to succeed, that you're going to die or anything like it. I get on airplanes and the devil says, this is it, you're going to crash, the plane's going to crash. I sit back and laugh because I know it'll be the best flight I had because he's a liar and he's the father of lies. So if he tells me I'm going to crash, I know I'm going to live. Are you hearing me? He's the father of lies. And because of it, you and I and the overcomer is on the earth. I'm looking for them, saints. I want to raise up a church and find that group in my church. I want to find that group in this church who decide to be overcomers and decide to be above and not below. Decide to live righteous and to live for God. Are you listening to me? How many of you say, Lord, I want to be a part of the overcomers group that, that gets to experience all that God has for us in this great day that's ahead. How many of you hear that? What would you do if, if tomorrow we awoke to the reality of an outpouring of God that was covering the earth? I mean a global outpouring where nationally people were coming to Jesus as they did in the 1904 revival or the 1785 or the, or, or the 1845 or the 1865. What would you do if the glory of God started covering the earth like it did in those days? Saints, I'm telling you, our day is not done. God is assembling a people on the earth that are called overcomers. 
and they are going to have signs and wonders in their hands. How many of you say, Lord, here am I. I want to be a part of that group. Can you hear that today?